hello everyone and welcome back to the channel today's tutorial is a very interesting one we are going to install and run the entire elk stack that is elasticsearch logstash as well as kibana in our ubuntu machine using docker and docker compose uh, just before we get started it might really help you if you have already watched the video on installing elasticsearch and kibana using docker compose and then we can continue from this video to add logstash to our installation. Uh, so here I have my docker compose.yaml file and probably you would already be familiar with all of the lines starting from line number one up to line number 18. Uh, this is the way we installed Elasticsearch and Kibana on our Ubuntu machine previously. Now we are going to add logstash in this docker compose file. Now, let me uh, quickly explain to you what is going on here. So, uh, along with Elasticsearch and Kibana, we have also added the logstash service in our docker compose.yaml file. And, and the image that the logstash service will be using is logstash 7.9.2, which is in accordance with our versions of Elasticsearch as well as Kibana. Okay, so next we are doing a port binding. Why is that? I will tell you very shortly. And after that, we are doing a volume mounting. Um, so here we are mounting the dot forward slash logstash underscore pipeline directory from our local machine onto the slash USR slash share slash logstash slash pipeline directory of our logstash container. So what this will do is that all of the files which are located inside the dot forward slash logstash pipeline directory will be available inside the docker container in the slash usr slash share slash logstash slash pipeline directory and what do we have in the logstash pipeline directory in our local machine uh, well we have the configuration of the pipeline that logstash is going to use so all of you do know that this is what we do uh, using logstash we create pipelines in which data enters from one end and then there might be certain sort of transformations on that data and then the data is output on the other end of the pipeline. Uh, so in this case, we are inputting data from a TCP port, which is the port 5000. Uh, and that is the reason why we need to do this port binding right here, which means that any data that we pass, uh, any data or any request that we pass on the port number 5000 on our host operating system will be passed on or forwarded to the port 5000 on the Docker container. And that will be the input for logstash. And what will be the output for logstash? Well, it would simply be our Elasticsearch service and our Elasticsearch host is Elasticsearch colon 9200. Uh, now please note that my system knows that Elasticsearch refers to localhost or 127.0.0.1. But if that is not the case in your system, you might want to change the Elasticsearch to something like localhost or something like 127.0.0.1. And then we specify the index in which we want the data to be indexed, uh, which in this case is hello logstash docker so this file will be picked up by the docker container because we are using volume mounting in our docker compose.yaml file and once our logstash container is up it will start running this pipeline in which any input that it receives on port number 5000 will be sent to elasticsearch to be indexed in the hello logstash docker index and without any further delay let us quickly head on over to our terminal and simply say docker compose up so this takes um, around one minute or so so uh, we can see the logs have already started being generated which shows that our containers are starting i'll actually be pausing this video and um, restart it once our containers are fully up and running but before that, just note the fact that if you don't have these containers locally, Docker will first pull that container and then attempt to start those containers. So it might take longer for you than expected. 
Uh, all right, so our services uh, are up and running now. As you can see, Logstash has also started running our pipelines. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll actually just confirm the fact that our services are running. And for that, I will simply say curl localhost 9200. And this output uh, tells us that Elasticsearch is up and running. Uh, let me also open the Kibana console and it opens normally, which means Kibana is up and running as well. Uh, so if I check what indices I have in Elasticsearch as of now, I will see that I do not have this hello logstash docker index. So if I would run any searches on this index, it would simply give me an error saying that index is not found. Uh, now, why is that? Uh, that is simply because logstash has as of now received no data over port 5000, which it would index in Elasticsearch. So let's change that. Uh, I would simply head on to my terminal and say telnet localhost 5000. Uh, telnet is a utility which will allow me to communicate with port number 5000 and send messages to this port. Uh, so if I say something like, uh, hello, uh, then suppose I say ELK, Suppose I say Docker, uh, then I say this is interesting and I hit enter. Uh, now let us head back to Kibana and see what's going on there. So if I do a get cat indices now, uh, we see that indeed a uh, hello logstash Docker index has been created. Uh, now, if I run this match all query on hello logstash docker index, we see that we have four hits and indeed we did send four messages uh, to logstash on port number 5000. And what, what were those? Hello, uh, ELK, docker, and this is interesting. And yes, indeed, those were the four messages that we sent to logstash. And there you have it. We have the entire ELK stack up and running using Docker and Docker Compose. Uh, the Docker Compose.yaml file that we used is present at this URL and I will link it in the description below. Uh, the only thing you have to do to run this is install Docker, install Docker Compose, and then just copy this file and run Docker Compose up. And it will run on any host operating system. It, it could be Mac, it could be Linux, it could be Windows and it could be anything. But the only precondition is that it should have Docker installed and running. Uh, so did you like this video? Please do tell me in the comments below. If you found the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you found the content of my channel helpful, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon in a brand new tutorial.